Good evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer for Saturday, the 11th of September. As always, we begin with our service of light, so I will light our candle. Light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can extinguish. And we're going to be singing our hymn throughout the service, Crashing Waters at Creation, and we'll sing the first verse now. Crashing waters at creation, ordered by the Spirit's breath, first to witness day's beginning from the brightness of night's death. And our psalm is Psalm 138, which we say together. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. For they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me, your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our, now we will sing the next verse of our hymn. Parting water stood and trembled as the captives passed on through. Washing off the chains of bondage, channeled to a life made new. Our Gospel is Matthew three thirteen to 17 The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, and when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So here we have the story. Where of course, we're very close to the beginning of Matthew. And, and sort of at the very beginning is the story of Jesus' baptism. Jesus is about 30 years old. And a really interesting thing happens here. We have all kinds of stories about Jesus when he's born. We have the stories of him having to be whisked off to Egypt to, um, to escape Herod's wrath. We have all kinds of, we have one little story of Jesus uh, when he's sort of uh, almost an adolescent around the age of 12. And he's at the temple in Jerusalem and his parents lose him at the temple and he's instructing the elders. And that's one little story between the birth narratives and, uh, and today's lesson, really. Um, <clears throat> but for the rest of Jesus' life, we, we don't know anything really about Jesus until after his baptism. His baptism really marks his beginning. Um, and, fr and from there, all of the rest of the Gospels, his healing, his teaching, of course, his crucifixion and resurrection, is all is the bulk of the Gospels, and it starts at its baptism. Baptism is an important beginning for Jesus. Um, now it marks it, it, the water of baptism connects with so many other things. 
in the history of Israel and in and and in the history of 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 creation really uh, one thing that's present at, at at Jesus baptism and is present at creation at the very the very first story in Genesis is uh, is water water is present at baptism it's over the waters that the spirit rests at the beginning of creation and God says let it be so and it is let there be light and there is light and and God sees it it is very good so this story of Jesus baptism has those uh, elements as well the water the spirit the presence of the spirit and the presence of God speaking so really this is a, a Jewish person reading this couldn't help but understand that this is about a new creation and in fact, our own baptisms are about that too. Now, Jesus, Jesus comes to John and says, baptize me. But John has been doing a baptism of repentance. In other words, turn your way around and follow, follow Jesus' way. Or follow God's way. Turn, you know, change your direction. Um, it, the baptism of repentance, uh, the water is symbolizing washing away dirt. Like washing away sin and starting anew. Now, John quite rightly has Jesus come and asked to be baptized. And he goes, but wait a second, you know, this is the sinless one, the holy one. How, how can I baptize him? But Jesus knew that the symbolism of baptism was going to be much, much more than simply the washing away of sin. It was going to be about dying and rising to new life. So John's baptism is a baptism of repentance. When Jesus comes, the symbolism of baptism is going under the waters of baptism and dying and then rising back through the waters of baptism to new life. And um, so Jesus, by coming to be baptized, knows that his road is going to lead to death. And he's accepting his death, but he's also accepting what will come after, and that will be rising uh, to new life. And for each one of us as well, baptism represents the same thing. It represents us dying, going under the waters of baptism, drowning, if you like, uh, dying to the old way of life that doesn't have a connection with God, that doesn't necessarily know there is a God. Um, but we rise up to new life uh, through the waters of baptism. And it also represents for us, just like for Jesus, a beginning. And we talk about baptismal ministry, uh, not just the clergy are ministers, but all of us, by being baptized, are baptized into a new life, which is deeply connected with Jesus' way. And that is our task. It, no, no matter what our occupation is in life, our life needs to be given over to the purposes of God's kingdom and Jesus' way and, and God's way of love. And so that's our purpose. As baptized people, we have a mission, and that is to be followers of Jesus, to follow him, yes, even to death, but life beyond death, and to follow his way. Let us sing together the next verse of our hymn. Cleansing water once at Jordan, closed around the one foretold, open to reveal the glory, ever new and ever old. And now let us say together the words of the Hero Israel. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And in our prayers today, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with hear our prayer. Let us pray for the peace of the world. The Lord grant that we may live together in justice and faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for this country, and especially for Queen Elizabeth, the Governor General, the Prime Minister, and all in authority. The Lord help them to serve this people according to his holy will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for children and young people. The Lord guide their growth and development. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Let us pray for the sick. The Lord deliver them and keep them in his love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are condemned to exile, prison, harsh treatment, or hard labor for the sake of justice and truth. The Lord support them and keep them steadfast. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and all who have borne witness to the gospel. The Lord direct our lives in the same spirit of service and sacrifice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our prayers today, we continue to pray for the sick. We pray for those known to each one of us, the people you, uh, we as individuals are praying for, and those unknown to us. We pray for a world that is sick, and we pray for healthcare workers who are doing everything they can, living with extreme exhaustion, trying to uh, promote the health of the world and to heal us from this pandemic. We pray for them as they are beleaguered with people who do not understand science and seem to be doing everything they can to stop progress against this disease. We pray, O oh Lord, that people will come to their senses and support the healthcare community by doing their part. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our cycle of prayer for the sick, today we pray for Steve Sinak, Brenda Brain, Alec Dickerson, Edith Walsh, George Hitchmo, Elsie May Scott, and Nicholas and Faith Banton. Especially we pray for Nicholas as he is to undergo a treatment today for um, an infected gallbladder, but this surgery is very, very risky because he's 96 and, and very frail. So we pray for him and for Faith, his wife, who is supporting him. We pray for all the sick, that they might know the healing touch of Jesus and have wholeness of being in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our refugee family, for Karima, Muhammad, Fatim, and Ahmed. We pray for them, keep, keep their hope alive, keep their faith strong and their love for each other they might support each other in these days of waiting. Uh, try to assuage their, their, their impatience and, and their great desire um, and, and make the process go more quickly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for 10 more households in our parish list. And if you're joining us from another parish or community, I invite you to pray for members of your community. Today, we pray for George, Kimberly, and Eleanor Bradley, for Stella Bradley, for Tom and Norma Bradley, for Jeffrey and Chelsea Bradshaw, for Larry and Brenda Brain, for Keith Braithwaite, for Phyllis Brandon, for David and Beverly Branston, for Francis and Tara Brazier, and for Doug and Betty Bricker. We pray for each one of them, O oh Lord, for their health, well-being, for their happiness. We pray for them, in, for any of them who are ill, especially uh, praying for Keith. And we pray for any treatments that will um, uh, cure him. We also um, pray that they might know that they belong to a community of faith which cares and prays for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray in the Anglican cycle of prayer for yesterday's and today's uh, on the list. Today we pray for the Diocese of Dunedin in the Anglican Church in Eritrea, and uh, Eritrea, New Zealand, and Polynesia and the Diocese of Dunkwa on Ofen in the Church of the Province of West Africa. We also pray for the Diocese of Echi in the Church of Nigeria and the Diocese of Etsako in the Church of Nigeria. We pray for all the bishops, clergy, and people of these dioceses. We pray for them in, in their mission, in their, their mission to serve God's kingdom in their place. We pray for the safety and health of their people 
And we pray that they might be encouraged, knowing that the world is praying for them at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for another brother of the Society of St. John the Evangelist. Today we pray for Brother Lucas Hall. We give you thanks for his work and ministry. We pray for his health and well-being and happiness. We uh, pray for his brothers who support him in his ministry. And we pray that he might know there is a wider community supporting him in prayer. We pray that God's grace might continue to flow richly through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray our nighttime prayer from the Anglican Church of New Zealand. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us, and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. And we pray our collect for this week. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now let us sing the last verse of our hymn. Living water, never-ending, quench the thirst and flood the soul. Wellspring, source of life eternal, drench our dryness, make us whole. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us in evening prayer tonight. Uh, this is the last one where we're, where we're doing it nightly um, because we're shifting to online er, in-person worship and continuing some of the online stuff. So uh, tomorrow is Sunday, so we hope that you'll join us um, now the uh, worship service generally will be will be available live streamed from 10 a.m. and then saved so you can watch it later at your convenience as well. Uh, that's the Sunday service. Um, but in terms of evening prayers, we're just going to do now just Tuesday night and Thursday night. Um, also, we will be doing a Teze on the second Friday of every of every month, which will be online as well. So we're doing a mix of both in-person and online. For the in-person service, you do need to phone and reserve because we have uh, a maximum seating capacity uh, because of COVID. So you do have to phone from Monday to Wednesday to book for the following Sunday services, either 8.15 or 10, or the following Wednesday service. So. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, to book for the following Wednesday service. Uh, so we hope that you'll phone the office at 905-634-1826, uh, Monday to Wednesday each week, if you want to come to one of our in-person services. But please do, I hope you'll still join us on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and once a month on a Friday. So uh, God's blessings to you, and a good night's sleep.